morning, my beautiful friends. I wanted to talk today about a subject that I think probably a lot of people have wondered about and have had questions about, and that's how to talk to amputees. Now, a answer that won't get me much view time, because I'm just gonna come right out and say it, is you talk to them like they're people, like, you know, because I'm a person. You talk to them like they're anyone else. However, since I have spent the first 27 years of my life not as an amputee, I do understand the discomfort. I understand the urge to ask questions, but to not know if it's okay to ask those questions. Um, so I get that there are things you may want to ask that you don't know if they're okay to ask. I also get that there are things that people ask that are totally not okay that they just come right out and say, and you know, it'd be best if they didn't. So I was up in Boulder this past weekend with my husband and he was super sweet to wheel me around Boulder and Pearl Street Mall if you've ever been there and we stopped for lunch. And I, like I said, was in a wheelchair because I don't have my prosthetic leg and it was too far to go on crutches. I didn't bring my crutches because I was a dum-dum. I didn't think I would need them, but I needed to go to the bathroom. And so I hopped into a bathroom. Side note, would not recommend doing that. It's super dangerous, but you know what? I, th things had to happen. And as I was coming out of that bathroom, a girl about my age was waiting to go in. And she looked down at my leg and looked back up at me. And she was just like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, like just kind of like blurted it out as like a, I'm, I'm sorry for your life kind of thing. And uh, I just kind of laughed it off. And I was like, hey, no worries. I'm making it work. You know, and that's all I said. And then I, we parted ways. It made me very aware of the instant discomfort that my presence brings to some people and that people who look different can bring to some situations because people don't know how to communicate. They haven't gained those skills. So I wanted to talk about a few things that can be really helpful. And let me start by saying, this is just my opinion. Everyone is gonna be at a different point in their journey. Everyone's amputation story is different. Some people were born without limbs. Some people lost them in horrific and traumatic ways. Some people had to make the choice. Everyone's story is different and what people are comfortable with is going to vary. Which is why my first recommendation is if you have a question, ask if it's okay to ask. I had someone ask, hey, um, I have some questions. Are you cool answering them? Like, are, do you feel like you're in a space today where you wanna answer any questions about like your amputation and what's going on? And I was super appreciative, appreci appreciative. I think I said that word wrong. Basically, I was just really grateful that they took a moment to make sure that I was in an okay mental space and that I was cool at answering questions that day. And I was, so I was like, yeah, absolutely, ask away. But there are other times where I have been answering questions all day or where I'm super emotional and I just really don't want to because I'm gonna break down crying or whatever. And the answer might be, God, I really appreciate it. But sometimes that story is painful and just blurting out, hey, what happened? is not a great way to start a conversation and put someone in an uncomfortable place, depending on who they are. So just ask if it's okay to ask. It's super affirming. It makes someone feel like you actually care about their feelings. And chances are the answer is probably gonna be yes because you took the time to ask. Secondly, and this is just like a minor pet peeve that I have. And again, I get it because I was on the other side of this equation for a long time. I'll be somewhere and I'll see someone like stare at me and then like say something to their friend and then like stare over at me again and then like, and then stare again. And I, I know that they want to say something or that they're having a conversation about me and that there's something on their mind or a question they wanna ask. In my opinion, it's better if you just do that rather than making someone feel uncomfortable by repeatedly staring at them because they look um, different. Enter into a conversation, make a new friend rather than just making someone feel weird by repeatedly glancing over at them because I've let you in on the secret we noticed. Something that I do think is a really confusing thing for people in society right now is when to know when to help versus when not to help. Like if I drop something and I'm on crutches and I don't have my prosthetic leg on or if I'm struggling to open a door in the snow in the wind carrying things and I'm obviously having a hard time, I feel like I can feel people's discomfort of like, I want to help, but should I help? Because there's a, a message that's being promoted, which is a really, really good message that you shouldn't just jump in and help people who you don't think are, or who, or who aren't able-bodied, because chances are they know how to help themselves. And is someone going to get offended if you try to help them? And so do you just not say anything and you don't help? Or do you jump in because you see that they're having a hard time and 
My recommendation on this, again, would be to ask, would be to say, hey, do you want any help or you got it? You know, um, again, feel free to disagree with me on that if you've been in this situation, but I prefer that people ask the question rather than not do anything or jump in. I don't like it when people just jump in and do things for me. That drives me nuts. However, sometimes I might be legitimately struggling and trying to do more than I'm currently capable of because I have been known to do that way too often. And uh, someone asking if I need help is a good opportunity for me to be like, yeah, actually, yes, I do. But for the most part, people who aren't able-bodied have absolutely adjusted to living life, know what they need, know what they don't need, know what to ask for, and don't need you to do it for them. So again, the message in this video is if you don't know, ask, or if you have a question, ask, instead of not. If you have a friend who's recently gone through an amputation or some other form of life-altering surgery, I found that while it is incredibly important to talk about it, it's also also really important to feel like life is more than that. Like we have friends that um, came over, brought us dinner, I'm still out of it. Like this was very new. And we probably talked about it for like five minutes. And then we spent three hours just hanging out with them and like talking about jujitsu because that's where we knew them from. And like talking about religion and politics and all different kinds of things. Because my identity is not an amputee. My whole life is not amputation, though it's a significant part of it right now is adjusting to it. So like if you know someone who's going through this, not every conversation needs to be about it. I think checking in is super, super helpful and awesome. And I love it when my friends do it like, hey, how are you doing with everything? But not pressing it, like not being persistent, not needing people to tell you things because it's really important to feel like you are more than this. It's really important to feel like people see you as a human being that is more than the identity of being disabled or being different because you are because you're still a human being you just had this other thing going on too so if you're communicating with someone who you know who's going through this i promise you there's more going on in their life and they probably have more on their minds than just this so have a normal conversation. Those are some really basic guidelines of communication with amputees or people who don't look the same as you. If you want me to do like a specific do's and don'ts list, I would be more than happy to do that. But I guess the real message of this video, and like I said, it could really just be summed up as um, talk to them like they're a normal person and ask questions if you have questions, but make sure that you get their permission first instead of bombarding them, instead of assuming that you have a right to their story, because you don't because it's their story. My story is my story and I choose to share it because I want to, but that is not the case for everyone. It is an intensely personal thing. And if you wanna know something, that's totally fine, but ask first. Thank you for pushing me around Boulder. Uh-huh, I'll get used to it. <laughs> he's the sweetest, you would never know it. Mm -hmm. And he's cute.